Hey guys, Pixelated Pope here, and uh, after I released my last video on how to use the palette swap shader, I realized how kind of ridiculous it is, uh, especially for those of you who aren't comfortable in GIMP, don't have Photoshop. Uh, it's just, just a pain in the butt, uh, much harder than it should be to generate those palette files that you need to actually use the palette swap shader. So I decided to build a tool to help everyone uh, be able to quickly and easily modify, create, and export uh, these palette uh, sprites so you can use them in your project. Uh, so let me show you this. So this tool will be included uh, or at least free to download for anyone who wants it uh, and wants to use the uh, uh, palette swap shader. Uh, and this is the palette builder. So uh, it's actually really easy to use, at least I think it is, but then again, I designed it. So there's that. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to bring in one of the sprites that, uh, uh, that, that you're using in your project that you want to generate a... Uh, a palette for. Uh, you don't need to click new right off the bat because this is a new project already. You can see up at the top, new project. So let's just add a sprite. So let's go down and we're going to use our little Disgaea Necromancer. So uh, actually, let's do this. So one thing to point out, you can bring in an animated GIF, but it has to be in a, in a strip, a sprite, a sprite strip format. Uh, if it's an animated GIF, like this file actually is, uh, I can't get the, the, this, the frames. Game Maker won't let you. It used to work back before Studio, back in like 8 and 8.1. doesn't work anymore. Uh, don't know why. don't know if they're going to fix it. But for right now, if you want to bring in an animated uh, individual frames, then uh, do that. And it will say, hey, is this a strip? How many frames? This one happens to be six frames. Is the background transparent? It is. Uh, if your background is a color that you want to remove the background, like if it was a sprite that you would say, you know, up here in Game Maker, add sprite, remove background, then say no. Uh, so is the background transparent? Yes. All right, I added six images, 38 new colors. So this is how you populate your palette over here. So each palette is capable of supporting 256 colors. So that's why this section is so ludicrously big. Uh, you probably won't fill even a quarter of this with most of your sprites, but it's there in case you need it. Uh, and the reason you might want to bring in multiple images is because uh, maybe your sprite, uh, say your character has a sword, but he doesn't actually pull out his sword until the third frame of his attack animation, right? He's like a samurai dude or something. Uh, so if you just brought in his first, his first frame, you wouldn't have any of the colors from his sword. They, they wouldn't be read out of that file. So you want to bring in the whole animation. And you can just keep adding more and more sprites. You could add all of that samurai character's animations to make sure you have all of the unique colors that appear across that entire character uh, sprite set here in this list. Uh, so let's let's kind of go over. Once you've got an image in, let's go over some of the UI here. So there's your... This is your palette, right? You can select stuff. You can do multi-select. You can do control select to add to the selection. Uh, shift select is selecting a range. Uh, pretty straightforward, basic stuff. Uh, you've got uh, shifting positions. Uh, removing a color. Don't recommend using this too often. Uh, it won't ruin your sprite, obviously, but that color will no longer be able to be swapped using this pal, uh, this pal sprite. Uh, over here in the view box, uh, obviously you want you, as you're building your palette, you'll want to see how the changes are affecting your your sprite. Uh, so you can zoom in. Uh, there's a zoom there. Hold Shift, and it'll zoom in faster. You can also use the mouse wheel. Uh, same uh, image. You can cycle through your image. You can just hold it down and let it play, or you can click. Uh, you can also change the background here, in case you're Sprite doesn't look very good on that background. Uh, and, you know, say you zoom in and slide it off to the right. Uh, I'm just left clicking to slide this around. 
and you know everything's screwed up just right click and it'll reset everything back to kind of default uh, so always a way uh, if you added too many images or you added the wrong image you can always just delete it uh, so yeah so now her animation is going to be a bit janky well you don't even notice but there it is so how do you actually use this what what do you want to do while you're here so let's go through the process of building uh, the palette sprite for this necromancer. So the first thing you want to do is you want to organize this mess, right? You want to get colors that belong to the same forms uh, all together so that you can easily select and modify all the colors at once. Uh, so let's do that. Let's start with her hair. Okay, how do, how do I know which colors are in her hair though is it is this part of her hair is this part of her hair is that part? I mean there's lots of similar colors and it can be difficult to know what colors belong to what part so there's a solution though and that is mousing over a color and holding alt and you can see that as you mouse around the part of the sprite that that color applies to is blinking so yes this is part of her of her hair so now I can hold alt and mouse around and then hit control so I'm holding alt and control control right now and then I can see yep this is part of her hair click this is part of her hair click that's not don't click that's part of her hair click 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 now the question is do I have all of her hair so I'm gonna hold space space does the same thing of, as alt but instead of having to be moused over it's whatever you have selected and that looks like I've got all of it. So I'm going to shift all that to the side, grab the darkest color, move it. That's not necessary, but I like to have this nice little ramp. And again, I like to have my blacks, uh, my really stark colors like black and straight white at the top. Uh, so now I've got her hair. So you just kind of go through and do all of that. So let's start with kind of her clothes here now. So that's obviously part of her clothes. Uh, this is part of her belt. I'm going to do more of her cloak and skirt and frilly parts first. Uh, so let's skip over that. There we go. That's part of her cloak. That's not. That's not. I think we're going to be down here mostly. Let's see. Okay, there we go. There's another part. Another part. Another part. How close are we? Oh, that's it. Okay, so again, all the way to the end. And I can move it to the other side of her hair, rearrange this a little bit, and now I got all of her clothes. So now let's uh, let's do the pink part of this. So that's the purple part. That's pink. That's pink. That's obviously pink. Is that all of it? Looks like it. And the purple. So purple, 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 purple. Oh, that's already organized for us. So right there. Okay, so... Let's do this. What? What is this? So there's a problem. Since I blink the colors white when they're highlighted, uh, there sometimes there just won't be enough contrast for you to tell which color is actually being highlighted. So you can change the highlight color by coming up here and clicking on this white box. Uh, since there's no red in this image right now, I'm going to make it just stark red. And now I can come back and when I hit Alt over this, Okay, it was her face. So this is all part of her face right here. So let's organize this. Got her whole face. Sweet. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, this would have been another place that would have been kind of hard to tell where it was showing up. But we can see that that's the corners of her eye. More of her eye. So let's go that here. More of her eye. More of her eye. So let's organize that. Is that part of her eye? Yep, that's part of her eye too. So do I have her whole eye now? I do. Well, I guess there's a little bit of... Oh, that's part of her skin. So that's why we don't get all of it. Uh, and you can zoom in and... There. So, so now we got her eye. And now we can do her tights and her... Uh, I don't know, little frilly thing around her neck, whatever that's called. So I got that, that, that. Oh, we're missing a color. That. There we go. Okay, so that's the whole thing. I mean, the longer you go, the easier it gets, obviously. Uh, so now this is her sleeves and uh, the area around her midriff. 
Let's see. And that's all that's left. And then the last color is the shine of her shoes. Why that's its own color, I'm not sure, but there it is. And then there's this. As you can see, it doesn't, nothing's blinking. So let's, oh, there it is, right there. So this is actually a problem on my art end. This color shouldn't even be here. Uh, and I should probably go fix that because that was part of the, the background that uh, I cut her out of when I ripped the sprite originally. Uh, or I didn't rip it, I downloaded it off the internet. But, you know, there was a blue background on it and I didn't remove that. So I don't want this color to be here because it doesn't do anything for me. And I'm going to go fix my art and remove that. But I want it out of my palette. So I'm going to use remove color and I'm going to say yes. And the, you know, if I don't go and fix my art and I add more sprites and I come back in, I'm like, oh, I want to add her first frame back. One new color added. There it is. So it's going to keep coming back unless I go and remove it from my art. So this, this is heavily reliant on the state of your art right now. So we've got our palette organized. Now we want to start doing the fun part, making all of our different colors for her. So... Up here, we've got our palette toolbar where we've been adding more sprites, which affects our palette, obviously. But now I can click new for a new palette and you can see our color adjustments shown up. So I can select any color and mess. Let's see, since it's black, I need to crank the value up first and then I can crank the saturation up. And now you can see that I can mess with the color there. Uh, little quirk about this, uh, and it's probably not the best user experience, but if you don't click apply, it doesn't save. If you click cancel, it'll just jump right back, right? But if I go like this, you might find yourself doing this a couple of times. Okay, that's exactly where I want it. Click, it's gone. It, it didn't save. So when you want to make a change, you got to remember to click apply. You'll see the color updated over here where you have it selected. And then it'll stay there. And then you can swap back to your base palette and see that it's there. So that's kind of the long and the short of it. So I'm going to keep that black. But let's build another palette for her. So I'm going to grab her hair. And I'm going to make it kind of this purpley color. A little bit more saturated. A little bit darker. So it's kind of a dark maroon. Click apply. And you can see all of that got changed. So now, what is this again? Okay, these are closed. So let's make it a little bit bluer. So you can just drag that around until... You can also use the mouse wheel on these. And you can right click and actually put in a value uh, if you want as well. Uh, and then you can use these little, I mean, there's lots of ways to move these guys around or you can click right in there and slide around. So let's make these kind of a deep purple, kick up the saturation because you can't have too much saturation, right? And then a little bit of value and apply. So now she's got that. And you could just kind of do this for everything. I mean, obviously I'm not trying to make something totally awesome. I'm just showing you how this works. Uh, and we can click the saturation up in her face because she's way too pale. Uh, and then I probably should have got that as well, but that's okay. Let's change the color of her eyes. Keep the saturation up. Let's go with like a green. There we go. And then this is her tights. Yep. So let's kick the saturation up on those, bring the value down a little. Now they're like bright red. Okay, finally, her little uh, sleeves and midriff area. Let's just kick the saturation down and make that gray. Uh, and then finally, we have that highlight. Oh, I should probably apply that. Highlight, uh, I don't really care, so I'm just going to turn the saturation down. And then that guy, which we don't need to change because I'm going to go remove him eventually. And there we go. So now I've built that palette. Sweet. So now you can either create another new one, which will base it off of this palette. So it'll basically copy the base palette and create a new palette. So if I click new, you can see palette two looks just like the base palette. Or I can duplicate. And now palette three looks just like palette two. So... Once you've gone through and built all of your palettes, uh, you can export it to be used in Game Maker with the Palette Swapper. So you do Export Palette, and there we 
go, NecroPal. Save over that. And let me pull that up so you can see what that looks like. And there you go. There's your palette sprite. Bring that into Game Maker and use that as the palette sprite for whenever you're drawing, you know, in this case, that sprite uh, or any of her animations. Uh, finally, I mean, you might want to come back and tweak these later. So you can, of course, save this project. So I'm going to save this, and it's a .pal file. It's really just a text file with a bunch of data grid data in it. Uh, so I'm going to save that, replace that. Uh, and then when you open it, so here's something that's a little weird. Trying to save all of the images that you brought in was going to be a complete and total nightmare. So I'm not doing it. Uh, so you open up your palette, and you'll see we've got our base. All of our colors are still organized, everything nice like that. But none of the images came back in. So I'm just going to come back, add her again real quick. And there she is. So now I can come back in and go through my sprites, and you, she's still, it's all there. So you can continue tweaking, decide, you know what, I wanted her to be, you know, have purple hair in this skin. Apply and save again, and you're, you're rolling. They can re-export it and bring it back into your game, and you're good to go. Hopefully this is a lot easier uh, and a lot more fun to use than uh, what uh, I was doing in Photoshop. I know I'm going to use this from now on instead of my Photoshop uh, method that I did that other video on. Uh, so hopefully everybody finds it useful, and I can't wait to see what you uh, build using the Palette Swap Shader. Uh, thanks for watching.